Welcome to Lecture 9 on the topic of the phloem. This lecture is separated into two parts and this is the second part. Please ensure that you watch the first part before continuing. This lecture is part of the subject plant physiology which is offered in the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology. This degree is jointly delivered by both Melbourne Polytechnic and La Trobe University. For more information on our courses, please visit our website at www.melbournepolytechnic.edu.au. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. We are learning about different aspects of the plant by taking a virtual journey through the plant. We are starting at Lecture 1 with an overview. We are then entering the root system and learning about how water and plant nutrition are absorbed through the roots, how they are translocated in the xylem, and then end up in the leaf to form a series of functions. We have learnt about transpiration and how stomata play a role in this, the important component of photosynthesis, both the light and the non-light carbon fixation carbon fixating reactions and we are now at the phloem. This is part two of the lecture. In this lecture we will be concentrating on loading and unloading of the phloem materials and allocation and partitioning. The image on your screen shows a leaf and the direction of translocation or movement of substances in the phloem. Sections of this leaf, as shown in figure A, were taken and examined under a technique called confocal microscope objectives. This allows a more in-detailed um, view of the phloem. Phloem loading is the process where photosynthates move from the chloroplast into the phloem. In this process, there are several steps. The first step is triose phosphates. These are transported from the chloroplast to the cytosol and converted to sucrose. <coughs> Other transport sugars are later synthesized from sucrose. The second stage is sucrose moves from the producing mesophyll cells to the cells near the sieve elements in the smallest vein leaf veins. This is short distance transport. And the third step the phloem loading, where sugars are transported into the sieve elements and companion cells. Sucrose is then translocated away from the source export to the sink long distance transport. Please familiarise yourself with this process. In lectures two and three at the beginning of this subject when we were looking at the root and water and nutrient movements into the root, we learnt about aplastic and symplastic roots. The initial short distance pathway of solutes is probably in the phloem symplastic. However, sugars might move entirely through the symplast or they may enter the aplast pr prior to phloem loading. There is some speculation about the exact mechanism. Several mechanisms are now recognised with the aplastic pathway and it is assumed that this is the most common mechanism. There are two transport pathways the phloem and the xylem, and then they extend throughout the plant body. The phloem is generally found in the outer side of both the primary and secondary vascular tissues. The figure on the side illustrates both xylem and phloem structure. The image on your slide shows aplastic loading. You will note that the first movement of sugar from the mesophyll cell through the plasma desmata, through the plasma membrane and into the bundle sheath cell is exactly the same route as in the symplastic loading. It is post the bundle sheath cell where this route changes. The compounds enter the parenchymal cells and the original ordinary companion cells and then into the sieve cells, some through membranes and some over membranes or in between the membranes. An important mediator of sucrose loading 
is a, com is a molecule called the sucrose H plus symporta. It is thought to transport or mediate the transport of sucrose from the apoplast into the sieve elements. You will see the figure on the slide shows this transport. This mechanism uses energy generated by the proton pump. Energy dissipated by protons moving back into the cells as coupled to the uptake of sucrose. You will note the role of ATP and conversion of ADP in this proton pump. Now let us look at phloem unloading. This is the process where assimilates leave the phloem. It is important into sinks such as developing roots, tubers and reproductive structures. Again, there are three steps. The first step is phloem unloading, the process by which imported sugars leave the sieve elements of sink tissues. This is then followed by short distance transport. After unloading, sugars are transported to the sink cells by means of a short distance pathway. The final stage is storage or metabolism of the, sh of the sugars, depending on their function at this point. Allocation and partitioning are the most important functions of the phloem. Regulation of the distribution of fixed carbon into various metabolic pathways is termed allocation, while partitioning is the differential distribution of assimilates within the plants. Allocation includes storage, utilisation and transport of assimilates. Carbon fixed in, fixed in a source cell can be used for either synthesis of storage compounds, starch is synthesised and stored within chloroplasts, mobilised for transport during the night, or meta metabolic metabolic utilisation. This used within various cell compartments of, of the cell to meet energy needs or to provide carbon skeletons for the synthesis of other compounds. And thirdly, the synthesis of transport compounds. This is incorporated into transport sugars for export to various sink tissues. Can also be stored temporarily in the vacuole. Let us now look at partitioning in more detail. Sinks compete for exported SIP photosynthates. This determines the distribution of transport sugars among the various sink tissues of the plant. Translocation of the sink tissues depends on the position of the sink in relation to the source. For example, young leaves might compete with leaves for photosynthates. Competition has been shown by numerous experiments in which removal of a sink tissue results in increased translocation to alternative, hence competing sinks. Conversely, increased sink size, for example increased fruit load, decreases translocation to other sinks, especially the roots. Please watch the following YouTube video on plant nutrition and transport. Make key notes from this video and insert your lecture insert into your lecture notes here. The required reading for this chapter is from the Taze and Zeiger recommended textbook Plant Physiology 5th edition. Chapter 8 in this book on the synthesis of starch and sucrose page 162 and 168 and also chapter 10 which is on the topic of translocation in the phloem. Please read and make notes on this entire chapter. Insert your notes into your lecture here. After you have completed your recommended reading, watched and made notes on the learning resources videos that accompany this lecture, you should have an understanding of the following. Translocation pathways, flow and function, the pressure flow model, how it is applied and how you can use it, solutes in the phloem, the structure of the important sieve elements and companion cells as well as the sieve plate pores, the role of phloem loading and the role of phloem unloading and associated pathways. And finally you should have an understanding of allocation and partitioning. 
This last topic is particularly important as it is an essential driver of productivity in agriculture. This brings us to the end of part two on the flow.